Griselda Blanco Restrepo, was a Colombian drug lord, she was active in the cocaine-based drug trade and underworld of Miami from the 1970s to the early 2000s. Some claim she was also a member of the Medellin cartel. Blanco was killed in Medellin on September 3, 2012, at age 69. Griselda Blanco Restrepo was born in Cartagena, on Colombia's northern coast. When she was three years old, she and her mother, Ana Restrepo, traveled south to Medellin, where she was exposed to a criminal lifestyle at an era of monetary, social, and political turmoil. Blanco's former lover, Charles Cosby, said that at the age of 11, she abducted, attempted to ransom, and eventually shot a child in a luxurious neighborhood near her house. Blanco became a pickpocket before she was a teenager. To escape the sexual assault of her mother's lover, she fled home at the age of 19, relying on theft for survival in the city center until she was 20. It is suspected that she may have engaged in prostitution to help support herself financially during this period, however she has denied this. Blanco had a vital role in establishing the cocaine trade between Colombia and major North American cities such as Miami and New York, as well as with traffickers in California. Her distribution network, which encompassed the United States and Colombia, generated $80 million every month. Blanco and her first husband, Carlos Trujillo, created a marijuana dealing operation in Colombia. After divorcing Trujillo in 1964, Blanco illegally entered the U.S. under an assumed identity and settled in Queens, New York, with her three children and second husband, Alberto Bravo, a cocaine courier for the Medellin cartel. They established a lucrative narcotics enterprise in New York City. Nine years later, in April 1975, Blanco was recognized by detectives and charged with federal narcotics conspiracy, along with 30 of her subordinates. The family fled to Colombia to avoid prosecution. She returned to the United States in the late 1970s to establish a new narcotics enterprise in Miami. Her returning home coincided with the onset of multiple violent public conflicts, most notably, hundreds of killings each year that afflicted the metro Miami region in the 1980s, known as the Miami Drug War. This was a time when cocaine was more profitable and traded than weed. The effort by law enforcement to stop the flow of cocaine into Miami resulted in the formation of CENTAC-26, Central Tactical Unit, a combined operation between the Miami-Dade Police Department and the Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, anti-drug operation. Blanco was captured by DEA agents at her house on February 17, 1985, and charged with conspiracy to produce, import, and distribute cocaine. The case was tried in federal court in New York City, where she was convicted and sentenced to 15 years in prison. During her incarceration, she was charged with three additional counts of first-degree murder by the state of Florida. The prosecution reached a settlement with one of Blanco's most trusted hitmen, Jorge Ayala, who agreed to testify that Blanco had ordered him to carry out the killings, however, the case collapsed due to technicalities involving a phone sex scandal involving Ayala and two female secretaries employed by the state attorney's office. Blanco pled guilty to three charges of second-degree murder in 1998 and received a 20-year prison sentence that would run consecutively. In 2002, Blanco, a lifelong cigarette smoker, suffered a heart attack in prison. In 2004, due to her ill condition, she was given compassionate release from prison in the United States and deported back to Colombia. Blanco had three spouses and four children. She met her first spouse, Carlos Trujillo, when she was 13 years old. She and Trujillo had three boys in Medellin, Dixon, Uber, and Osvaldo. All three were born before Blanco turned 21. Blanco and Trujillo were divorced but remained business partners. Blanco ordered Trujillo's execution after an altercation over a failed business venture. Blanco married Alberto Bravo after her marriage to Trujillo ended. After returning to Colombia, Blanco accused Bravo of taking millions of dollars from the business, while Bravo accused Blanco of exaggerating her godmother Monica. Blanco murdered Bravo by shooting him in the head. Blanco had her youngest son, Michael Corleone Blanco, named after the character Michael Corleone from the film The Godfather, with her third husband, Dario Sepulveda. Sepulveda abandoned her in 1983, returned to Colombia, and abducted Michael when he and Blanco disputed over custody. Blanco paid to have Sepulveda slain in Colombia, 
and her son returned to her in the United States. According to the Miami New Times, Michael's father and older siblings were murdered before he reached adulthood. His mother was imprisoned for the most of his youth and adolescence, therefore he was reared by his paternal grandmother and legal guardians. Michael was placed under house arrest in 2012 after being sentenced to two felony charges of cocaine trafficking and conspiracy to distribute cocaine. In a 2018 episode of the Investigation Discovery documentary series Evil Lives Here, he discussed his lonely upbringing. He appeared in the 2019 VH1 docuseries Cartel Crew, which follows the descendants of drug lords. He also has a clothing line called Pure Blanco. Michael claims his mother became a born-again Christian in her final years. On September 3, 2012, Blanco and her pregnant daughter-in-law visited the Cardiso Butcher store on the corner of 29th Street in Medellin. As she departed, an assassin riding a motorbike shot her twice, killing her. The act resembled Blanco's assassination method during the Miami drug war.